there is something that is very important when we see our clients is to know what to know what our client wants to change in their life we need to to clarify to ask as many questions as we can to our clients to know what is what they want to change so that would be including including in setting the goals as usual i always say the same metaphor because when the clients come to see me they i ask them okay well what's the problem i have my intake for with 20 30 questions but just to make me understand what's the problem well i i don't want to be anxious uh, i don't want to be stressed i don't want to uh, to feel sad i don't want to be depressed okay so what is what you want and sometimes the client has to think because when we think about what we want it takes some time so that's what we need to clarify what is what we really want we cannot say what we don't want we need to know what is what we want in the same way when we go to a restaurant you check the menu and when the the waiter come to you okay what would you like uh, you don't say i don't want this i don't want potatoes i don't want you say what you want so it's the same we are like the the the, the waiters of the the practice we need our client to tell us what they want and we can help them to get what they want but we need to know exactly what they want so it's the same to practice self-hypnosis what is what we really want to achieve with self-hypnosis what is our goal it can be in short term it can be in a longer term medium term one month what we want tomorrow what we want in two weeks what we want in one year there are mm, okay let me see mm -mm -mm. I want to make sure that I cover everything that is needed. Uh, um, okay, I'm going to take my guide. Okay, by the second step will be uh, relaxation. So, what I was saying, the preparation is important, just to be relaxed, not having the mobile phones. And we're going to, the, to learn inductions today how to do inductions on ourselves that is probably is similar than the, indu the inductions i can tell you as a hypnotherapist they're the same the only thing that you do it on your on your own one of the induction if you have been here before is just the eye fixation you just focus the stay at one spot on the wall and after a while it's obvious that you start to relax and you feel tired and your eyelids drop so you can do the same on your own and you have seen the hypnotherapies or the hypnotists in the past they are recognized for the watch so why do we do this as a hypnotherapist i don't do it but i could do it just to help my client to relax because when you look at here for a long period of time you get absorbed in the movement so that's what they used to do in the past okay look in, look at the look look at the watch look at the watch so the client or, or whoever was gets absorbed in the in the pen or in the watch or whatever and gets relaxed and follows the the suggestion so the same we do now is more is moderner just to look to stare at one spot on the wall and staring at that point after at that spot after three minutes you really want to close your eyes because it's uncomfortable so that's the same and we can do that on our own but it requires um, um, discipline it requires discipline to do that and practice practice i don't know if i have I, I have said before that practice is not, is one of the most important things to learn self-hypnosis probably i want to remember you to remember that if self-hypnosis is more powerful the more you practice the better you get in that okay the third thing or the third step is going to be to enter in trance how do we enter in trance? What is trance? The first thing, because many people wonder, that sounds like very powerful trance. You can imagine the zombie just, well, trance is just being deeply, deeply relaxed in a hypnotic state, we could say. 
because hypnosis is just being deeply relaxed, opening the creative part of your mind, willing and open your mind to changes. And basically that state when you are really willing to change, when you open your mind to receive information, that's a state of trance. As I was saying before, you are, we are in trance every day, six, six, seven or eight times per day. Especially in the morning, when we get up in the morning, and at night, at night time, when we go to sleep, is when we are more suggestible. Because well, in the morning we are not really thinking much uh, about the stuff that we have to do. And when you are watching a movie, especially when you start crying or you start laughing, even if you know that the movie is not real, why are you crying? Why are you laughing? So you are in that state of trance. So I want to explain that tran trance is just that hypnotic, the hypnotic state that helps you to do changes, to change things. That's all. Positive talk. Okay, the fourth step will be a positive talk. Um, Positive talks are like small steps to achieve our goals. I forgot to say that when setting our goals, there is something that is important. Martina, I know that I could hypnotize you in 10 seconds now, because now you are in delta state. <laughs> you are in delta state now. I could, I could tell you now, sleep. And you will quit the smoking, you will do whatever you want right now, <laughs> you know? I'm trying to stay awake though. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. Just feel free if you want to stand up because it's very warm in here. If you, need to, if you need to take a coffee, if you need to jump or whatever, just feel free to go whatever you want. So. Yeah, it's very warm in here. So, Mart Martina, don't make it easy for me. Be resistant, be resistant. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, the first step. I think that I have said this thousands of times. And this about setting your goals. About your smart goals. I think that in all the schools or universities, this is becoming more and more popular about setting a smart goals. And what is a smart, a smart goal? A specific, measure, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time, timing. So our goals should be, well, uh, always smart, smart goals. Is it clear? Do you understand about by smart goal what, what it means, or you, or you would like to explain a little bit more? Okay. Well, just very, very briefly, um, specific. We have to narrow down what we want because if we are, we are saying, I want to be confident. That's huge. I want to be happy. That's huge. When do you want to be happy? In which situation? So you have to narrow down what is happy for you. So it has to be something specific. You cannot say it because the word happy, there are words that are very wide. So to make it smaller, just to narrow it down. Uh, measurable. To, something that is measurable. Something that you can measure. How do you know? that something is measurable. Mm. You could say, okay, I want to be happy when I'm seeing my partner uh, during the weekends. I don't know, I'm narrowing down. I'm just imagining a situation that someone is a helpful relationship or whatever. And after the weekend, have you been happy? So you can, something that you can measure, uh, achievable. So can you achieve that or is mad or, or, or your girlfriend or boyfriend is hitting you and, and you want to be happy? Is it something that can be done or you want to be 
uh, I don't know, confident and you want to be the most confident person of your company. But your company, there are 1,000 people in the company and you are lacking confidence. Can you really be the most confident person of your company? It doesn't make sense. So it has to be uh, something that we can achieve. And usually we used to set small goals. That's important with our clients as well. Instead of doing something big, we are winning if we set small goals. Little winnings, little winnings or little wins. If someone wants to be confident, let's set a small goal with that client. Okay, give me one situation, just one, where you want to feel confident. Okay, uh, when I talk to my man, um, whatever. Okay, so let's help that person to be confident in very specific and sure, something that is easy, that is an achievement, something that we don't need to create superheroes. We don't need superheroes. We just need someone feels better with themselves. And we can get that by helping them achieve little things. By getting little things, we will achieve a great thing. And that's what we want to achieve with our clients or with your friends or with yourself. If you want to use self-hypnosis, because self-hypnosis is the same. We can achieve great goals, but we cannot do it from one day to another day. We need little motivations. It's the same with diets in my case. We need from time to time some little treats as well, otherwise we're going to, to get mad. So those little motivations is what we need. And it's easier to achieve our bigger goal if we achieve just short goals. And timing as well. It's important to know, I say that I will be brief, but I get excited, you know, as you can see. Timing, um, you need to know when you want to achieve that goal. Do you want to get it for tomorrow, for in one week, in one month? Because if you have that date in your mind, you're going to start training your brain to get that goal for that day. And it's going to help a lot. However, if you say, okay, I want to be confident, I want to be confident. Pfft, that's like to say, I want to be rich, whatever. So it doesn't make sense. So it has to be something specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timing for our goals. Okay, so we are back our steps and we're going to start the practice nearly now. We were here about the positive talk. The positive talk, there are three rules that are important. Self-talk, as I was saying, are little steps to achieve our bigger goals. And those three rules are always talking positive, as I was saying. We, don't, we cannot say what we don't want. We have to say what we want. We have to use the present tense. I am. Mm, I want. And we have to use always the first person, ourselves. So we want something positive. Now, those three rules is what we will apply for our positive talk. And that's going to help to rehearse the, the brain as well. Uh, okay, that will be the, for, the fourth part. I have a, one of the hands out, not now, in a moment, I'm going to tell you to check one sheet and we're going to write down our goals I'm going to show you one, uh, well, all the steps. We're going to practice all the, all the steps. Uh, and the fifth step is returning to awakening state. Even if awakening state is just a way of talking, because we are never asleep, so it's just back to the normal conscious state of mind. We are never sleeping, so just being aware and be prepared to um, to achieve what we want to achieve, to feel more energetic, giving you self-positive talk uh, after visualization and including in the positive talk, saying I want to feel more confident. You imagine that you, I'm using confident as an example. Okay, uh, that I'm going to give you an example. You imagine that mm, my goal will be mm, being confident when I'm doing presentations and I want to I want to be confident when I'm doing presentations 
with people that I don't know. So I'm big, I'm narrowing down my goal. Um, I want to feel confident when I'm doing presentations with people that I don't know, and I want to feel confident and I don't want that my heart beat as fast as it is now. So what I want is just to feel calm and feel relaxed. That will be my goal. What, uh, after I, I will do my relaxation, I will enter in that hypnotic trance and my positive talk. What are the little steps that I can, I can follow? I say, I know what I want to say. So that's my positive talk. So I feel good with myself. And I repeat that several times. But in this, this is just an example. But I could give 10 positive talk. And at the same time, using visualizations with your positive talk, imagining, seeing, hearing, feeling what you want to see, how you want to feel, how you want to behave. I have a question for you, Ivan, Please. around the, the fourth step there, the positive talk. Yeah. And what my, um, it's not a worry, but what my question is, when you have, so you've clear in your mind what you want to do, um, you've relaxed yourself, so I'm, you've got to show us around that. So, I mean, I can do that, I can relax myself, I put myself into trance a lot of times. And normally I would do it with a recording. So are you saying here that you'd actually do it without using a recording? And therefore, if you do, are you not risking the conscious mind coming back into play when you're actually talking, when you're, because the conscious mind has to tell you what you have to say? A good question, Cormac. And there is a high risk that the conscious take over. Obviously, if you can record yourself and listen to the CD, it will be even better. Mm -hmm. And listening to CDs, that's even better. You are doing self-hypnosis and you are just following the instructions uh, of yourself. So that's self-hypnosis of someone else if you are listening to your CD. However, what is important is practice, because you cannot listen to the CD all the time. And you might need to get in that state when you are in a meeting, when you are seeing someone, you are going to see someone uh, uh, in five minutes, so you want to get in that state of feeling good, and you might learn how to uh, how to get in self hypnosis yourself as well, whenever. But there is a high risk that that can happen. That self talk that you start thinking, uh, this is useless, or, or whatever, or it doesn't make sense what I'm doing, or whatever. You can start thinking about many things and not doing your self talk. So there is a high risk. So I guess that makes the goal setting stage even more important than that you are specific on what you want and then maybe have that. It's, in, it's important the preparation in advance. So we cannot start to do the self-hypnosis if we don't know what we are going to do. So we need to have all this, uh, knowing all these steps before starting. We have to have it clear. Otherwise, if you have to think about what you are going to do there are many chances that you're going to start the session preparing what is the self-hypnosis. Even if you believe that you are in self-hypnosis, you are going to be thinking, okay, what is what I want now? So the preps are always before the session and to have it clear. And if we are able to record a CD with our voice, just writing down what we want or listening to someone else, that's even better. It's easier as well to do it. But the idea is to have one more tool and be able to master this tool and to use it to feel confident when we need it, to feel relaxed when we need it, to feel um, whatever when you need it. Do I answer your question? Is it answered? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. If they are interconnected, what is actually your question? Um, you know, it would be the, the visualization, the, you know, 
was staring at a spot, I would do that for meditation. So, is meditation a form of hypnosis nearly? It is. I, mean, I wouldn't get to the stage if I can't hear the doorbell ringing or anything like that. I'd love to. But um, it, it just seems to be all interconnected. It's like yeah. the law of attraction, the, the, the yeah, positive topics, the affirmations, and are they all. Actually, I could, tell you, I could tell you that yoga is hypnosis. For me, yoga is hypnosis. If you get in a state where you are focusing the attention or something and you are very concentrated, you are in a hypnosis state. So your yoga teacher may be your hypnotist. However, well, that's yoga. Mindfulness is hypnosis. It's another way of doing hypnosis. Only that you are focusing your attention on your breathing, on your heart rate. Uh, law of attraction. The law of attraction mm, is, what would I say, is related to visualizations as well. Attention. I say that it's more related to attention, paying attention, what is around you. Mm, well, there is psychology behind that. I was in an event last Saturday and there was a PhD a psychologist talking about if we could predict the future or not. And probably most of people will say, no, the, the future cannot be predicted. However, the psychologists say that the future can be predicted. And what is his re reasoning behind this? Is that now, if I will ask you, all of you, what is hap going to happen in your life in one year, probably all of you know what is going to happen. Just checking what are you focus the attention on. What are you spending your energy? What are you concentrated, concentrated, concentrated on? So what does it mean? That probably most of us now we are spending our time, our energy, uh, specifically those two things, in something. So there is a high probability that in one year or in three months, you are going to be doing what you are doing now, where you are spending your energy or your time. And that's the law of attraction. The law of attraction is paying attention, concentration, focusing on something. And automatically you are going to open your mind and you are going to see things that you hadn't seen if you hadn't focused the attention on something, on that thing. For that reason, the psychologist is saying, you can predict the future. If you think about yourself, okay, how am I spending my time? What am I doing now? If you self-assess yourself, you might know what is going to happen to you, where you are going to be in one year or in two years. It's not 100% sure, but probably it can be even more accurate than a medium, you know, if you self-evaluate yourself. The thing is that sometimes we don't do that. So the future is more, according to him, the future is more predict uh, predictable than we think. And that's law of attraction. So you are thinking, you are focusing the attention on something, so obviously, that's going to happen. Though there are many probabilities that that's going to happen. And uh, well, there is an example that teachers always say about when you want to buy a car. You usually want to buy a car that nobody has. You want to buy a car that is different. And when you buy that car, what is what happened? That you start seeing your car everywhere. How is that possible? Because you are more aware. You are paying attention. You are focusing. Is that hypnosis? That might be hypnosis. Is that meditation? It might be meditation. What is meditation? It's all very interconnected. So to your question, I say uh, all is connected. All these uh, techniques, tools, therapies, whatever you want to call it, because there is a fine line between all, all those words. And probably because English is not my first language, I don't want to get involved in a debate that I will lose for sure. But there is a fine line and for me, all that is a kind of hypnosis. Obviously, I'm promoting hypnosis because it's my therapy. Someone else will say that uh, hypnosis doesn't exist. There are many hypnotherapies that say, say that uh, hypnosis, does, hypnosis doesn't exist. It's just a state of mind. If we start debating what is a state of mind and we start playing with the meaning of the words, this is an endless debate. So. My simple question, uh, answer is that yoga is self-hypnosis, if it makes sense. It might not have sense, but for me it has, you know. Do I answer your question, more or less? 
They are very interdependent. I, I believe yeah. personally that hypnosis is mm. the, the strongest of all of these, the most powerful, because of the fact that, I mean, so there are things like meditation and that, but, folk, but hypnosis <coughs> focuses you on something rather than on, on nothing. Uh, and also, it, it actually, um, like our hypnotherapy, as what Ivan will be talking about, to actually help you get more confident. Yeah. Right? I, I believe because of, you know, the driving part is the subconscious and it just talks to the subconscious and it can talk to the subconscious with an actual focus and give a clear direction on something to do and something to feel. And then without you noticing it, you actually start to become what you want to become and tone yourself through hypnosis. Um, the law of attraction, I believe, is very similar However, I don't think it's as strong as hypnosis. I agree, Cormac. So I strongly agree with you. But if there was someone else who could say something different, but I believe it's, my belief is similar to your belief as well. The, all those things are very interconnected. It's all about training your mind and being aware. I think that being aware is an important word. Being aware about the things. And we can do that by training our minds, our brain, that they can be trained. We can make them stronger as well. So self-hypnosis, meditation, yoga, uh, pilates, all that, that's a way of self-hypnosis for me. Okay, so let's continue now. But it's, 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 it's very interesting, all these topics, you know, for people like us that we are like-minded, we could be talking about this and if there was another therapist he could talk about meditation or mindfulness for hours. I could, we could be debating what is better, what is worse. From my point of view, the more tools we have, the better. So I have trained, I think, in all the therapies for the sake of my client. And it's true that I feel much more comfortable. The more tools I have, the more comfort comfortable I, I, I feel. I could say that it's because of my clients, but now that I'm speaking at the same time that I'm thinking, it's good for me as well, because the more tools I have, the more confident I feel to help more clients. And I think that what I want is results for my clients. I want to help them. Okay, so let's see now how we can start doing this. Uh, 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 five steps. Is there any other question, something that you would like to know about this? Okay, just as a summary, uh, okay, we're going to do now an example. Okay, for the guys you have been here about, mm, mm, yeah, well, relaxation will be just sitting on the chair, relaxing, taking deep breath, uh, entering in trance. Uh, I think that we can do, because there are many inductions that we can use to, uh, to be in self-hypnosis. We can use the one I was saying, that's probably the most useful or we can use for instance another induction you have seen the suggestibility test when you imagine that the the, the arm is heavy it's getting heavier and so you imagine that the, your arm is getting heavier that you are just mm, putting a bucket with water or whatever or you just imagine three books there and your arm is going down down and down what we are doing by doing the, that exercise ourselves is just focusing the attention on something and that's what we want so any induction is welcome and the, our aim is to decrease the activity of the left brain of that conscious part of the mind that is always thinking or logical or evaluating, evaluating or assessing uh, okay let me see so now what i will ask you before starting the practice Okay, just to clarify. Okay, I, I wrote this guide, but you can you can see that I, I don't know it many times that I forget things. So, okay, some mistakes that we do when we are practicing self hypnosis that I might interesting to know. 
belief that self-hypnosis is not effective for you. That's something very typical. Okay, this is not working for me. Uh, belief that when you are practicing self-hypnosis, you are not hypnotized. Belief that when you are practicing self-hypnosis, you are going to sleep. Uh, you are sleeping. You are never sleeping in self-hypnosis. You are sleeping or you are not sleeping. Uh, difficulty to reach a deep level of trance. I have to say that even in a light state of trance, changes happen in our mind, in our body. So we don't need to be in a deep state of trance when we are, we don't hear any noise, we don't hear anything. So just with light state of trance, change, changes happen. Not seeing any progress or, or improvements, as I was saying. It might take, the after practicing the first time, you might say, okay, this is my tool. I'm going to take it with me everywhere. Or after one week, this is crap. Uh, this is not working. So the truth is that it's depending on the person. We are all completely different. So the more we practice, the more useful it's going to be. That's the only thing that is sure. I cannot focus on my goals. Even if our mind is wandering away, um, it's, a, it's a still effective. Because when our mi one, mind is wandering away, usually come back again. So it's like a tennis. Sometimes if we are in the session, even with clients, our client, I might be talking and my client is thinking about something else. But in many cases, the client come back to, to the session. So that's what's going, what's going to happen to you as well during doing self hypnosis you are going to suddenly switch and you are going to start thinking about something else. However, with the practice, you will realize, you will be aware that you are thinking about something else and immediately you will be back to your session. Well, I think that this is, uh, is I will not come out of hypnosis. That's uh, something, some people might think they are afraid of getting stuck in hypnosis, that they can't open their eyes. And as you all know, you just can get out of hypnosis by opening your eyes, by telling yourself, okay, I have done what I had, I had to do, so I'm going to open my eyes. You might stay longer because you feel comfortable, but it doesn't mean that you can't open your eyes. It means that you are telling yourself, okay, I'm going to be a little bit longer, but it doesn't mean that you can't open your eyes. Okay, I don't remember my suggestions or my positive talk while doing self hypnosis. For that reason, preparation is important before starting or a CD or recording a CD. Just for your information, I record my CDs with a program called Audacity. It's very good. It's a free software you can download from the internet and it works very well. I, I, I record my CDs uh, with that program called Audacity. It's free software. Can you say that again, Ivan? I'm actually yeah. interested in recording things. Audacity is the program and it's free to download, is that right? That's it. So you just need a microphone, basically, and or not even a microphone. You don't need a great quality. Yeah. And that's it, just recording. If you want to, to put a background with music, with nice music, that's even better as well. That's even nicer. It allows you to do that. Yeah, you, yeah, you just yeah, in, import your voice and okay, you can record your voice and after you can import a tune, you can import a background music and you can just set the, the, the level, the volume, higher, lower and it's very easy, very easy to work. So I would recommend you to use that one. Okay, at the end of my guide, there is a bonus that is called, what I was explaining to you, the fast phobia cure in my guide is explained, but just with my style, with my, my how would I say, my touch. That's I say. downloadable from your website. Yes, that's from my website. I will tell you later on my website 
at the end when we finish all the well you have it there as well and that's very useful as well to use that self-hypnosis you have any fear well the fast phobia cure you don't have it there my website is this one just in the guide at the end there is a fast phobia cure so let me check if we we start now with the five steps or we start setting the goals the individual goals and we start uh, okay So what we are going to do now, we're going to set our goals. You are going to take now one of the, the last sheet I gave you. There is a form and you're going to start writing. This is personal, so don't show to anyone your goals. And the first thing I'm going to guide you. So I'm going to do these five steps with you. And the second time you practice, you are going to do it on your own. So the idea is now important, the preparation, setting your goals. I'm going to give you, so now take your, your form, take a pen. Are you guys got a pen, all of you? And we're going to, we're going to start practicing. Remember, the goals must be specific, must be something that you can measure. They must be something that you can achieve. Something that can be realistic. And 